Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hello everyone, checking in on the market with a wild day today. We started with a halt this morning after going down 7%, and then we ended with weakness on a bounce attempt that did not get any follow through. And we had volume at the end of the day, which was a soul crushing candlestick for bulls. We dropped from 278 to 274.37 on 12 and a half million shares traded on that massive five minute candle. If you go back and look at on the way up, we had days where we had 50 million shares traded in the entire day. And we just had 12 million in one five minute candle. Bears have complete control. Bears will have complete control as long as we are in an hourly downtrend. Every single day where we do not see an hourly trend change, bears win. So we started this morning with the low of the day, the halt made things a bit difficult. Brokers were slow, a bounce. We knew just to be looking for an hourly lower high not an easy, at least for me, I had a little difficulty today. Pretty much a non-event day for me. Little wins, little losses. I think I ended slightly red. And my mistake was being faked out by this higher high. When in hindsight, that's close enough, an 11 cent bull break to consider that a double top, knowing we're looking for an hourly lower high. And I just couldn't find a good risk to reward setup that I liked for a bear entry at those levels. So it was a missed opportunity, but it's the same play that we saw a bunch of times last week where we bounce through the morning, we set an hourly lower high, and we see weakness into the end of the day. And if we look at SPY on the hourly time frame, so that happened today, look at Friday, bounce in the morning, weakness into the end of the day. Of course, aside from that end of the day, little bull move uh, the day before that, bounce in the morning, weakness into the close. So that's the pattern right now. Obviously, we're not going to set a daily higher low. We blew through that support. If you've been watching these videos, we were watching for a daily higher low. We had to break the high of Friday to confirm it. And that's not going to happen. And this is the scenario that I talked about where we can say, okay, this time is different. For 285 breaking for me, shifts from this is like 2018 to this is now like 2008. And that's because we don't have the V-shaped recovery. This lower high after bouncing so significantly and dropping to a lower low and having this massive gap down day in the first halt during regular trading hours of a 7% drop since I think 1997. Things are extreme out there. Cash is one of the safest places to be in aside from bearish positions that are very comfortably profitable and hourly trend will be our guide. If we see a gap down open tomorrow, pretty much the morning, if we start the morning with a dump below the low pre-market, I'm looking for a bounce. If we start the morning with a bounce, I'm looking for an hourly lower high. So that's the way I approach each morning and we'll have to see what we get tomorrow. Bears in control. What's our next support? 273.09. And after 273.09, we're looking at 272.42, 267.83. And we know that even if we do change the hourly trend, anything under three. 13.84 is just a daily lower high. So we have aggressive bears shorting five minute lower highs. We have patient bears shorting hourly lower highs and we have really patient bears waiting for the next daily bounce to then enter short positions again. As far as bulls go, only plays are oversold bounces but RSI levels are much less meaningful in this market environment because RSI levels help us when we have historical comparisons. I can look at CGC or whatever ticker and say, okay, we bounced two times in the last four years when the four hour RSI has hit this level. This is an unusual environment. Fear is so high, it's a news driven event. RSI levels are less useful and it's one of my major tools on oversold bounces that I love, but I know to be way more cautious on oversold bounces because RSI alone is not enough. Have to have price levels nearby to be using as stops to be going off of. If we get a gap down open tomorrow, I may begin initiating some long-term positions to get positions again. I did the same thing on the initial dump. I was looking for four positions. I had one fill. I sold that one after a couple day bounce. 
but I may be looking to start that game again if we get a gap down open. We'll see. IWM dropped to the lower low last week, a little bit of an early signal, a close at the low of the day. It's clearly much weaker than everybody else, and we're looking at the low of the 2018 dump of 125.81 as support. And if we look at the yearly time frame, I don't want to, we look at the six month time frame, all time high, low, lower high, and it will be very notable if 125.81 breaks. QQQ, tech sector continues to hold things together to a certain degree. We did drop to a lower low, but look at the monthly time frame for QQQ. Anything above 181.82 is a monthly higher low. The S&P 500 largest weight is the tech sector, and these big names like Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, they hold a ton of weight in this market. You look at the Apple monthly uptrend, we're not going to lose it on this dump unless it is extremely significant. We got to dump 30 plus percent from here to see a loss of the monthly higher lows. Microsoft, monthly higher low. Last level, 130.78. We got a dump, a bit less, maybe 15, 14% or so to lose the monthly higher lows. They're still in long-term monthly uptrends. That's something I'm paying attention to. QQQ is gonna be the same as SPY. The hourly downtrend is our clear guide. 192.11, low of the day is being tested in after hours. We'll see what futures trading does. XLF, much weaker than the tech sector. Already broke bearish last week. Huge gap down, second in a row. If we gap down again tomorrow, it's a bullish reversal, three gap down pattern. Doesn't mean we bounce tomorrow. The fourth day is what has to be bullish to confirm it, which would be Wednesday. But just keeping an eye out if things start to get extreme because the weekly RSI is already in the low 20s. And if we see another gap down, 2205 will be in play. And again, that's a very key level, the low of the 2018 dump. Healthcare, still a daily higher low. 89.98, double bottom at that level, at the low of today. Have to change the hourly trend for us to believe that that support can hold. Low of the day, high of the day, higher low, have to break 94.28 tomorrow to confirm an hourly trend change and set the daily higher low. If the bulls pull that off, we're just looking for a lower high compared to 115. But any name that is holding its low is standing out as stronger than names that are not. And there's a whole bunch of them. Cost, Walmart, NEE is an energy company, Nextra Energy, T. Who else we got? There's a handful. Make note of who's holding low of last week and who is not. Biotech sector, Week close, breaking the low of last week. Next support level, 81. And then a lack of clear support until the dump. Actually, that's not the 2018 dump low. 72.97 would be the next clear level. And the hourly downtrend will be our guide. Bounce this morning, set the hourly lower high. Bears controlled the rest of the day. SMH with a bear break. Hourly downtrend is the guide. Bulls have to hold 117 and break 126.94 to change the hourly trend, which is a tall task for these bulls to try and pull off. Next support level, 120.62, and then 115.08. Semiconductors, monthly uptrend. Still a good bit of space. We could pull back another 10% before we get to that monthly support. TLT, so we're going to start looking at some bond names. Personally, I have never used a bond chart to enter a trade in my entire life. So for me and my style and my system and what works for me, bonds are irrelevant. But I recognize that bonds are extremely relevant to the macroeconomic picture of what's going on. And I have no doubt that there are traders out there who their game plan, the bond charts are very significant. So I'm not dismissing it. I'm just saying it's not for me and it hasn't been needed for my trading style. But we'll start covering it. With the big gap up in profit taking, do we have an hourly uptrend still intact? The answer is no. We're now in an hourly downtrend. Higher low at the low of the day. Lower high, lower low. So hourly downtrend means zoom out and look for a daily higher low to form. There's tons of space for that to happen. 
And if we see hourly RSI levels get oversold, that's generally a good time to be scouting for a daily higher low to form. So it's certainly looking like at least a temporary top is being set. Best case for the bulls would be a daily inside bar tomorrow. But aside from that, looking for the daily higher low. The VIX is continuing. So the VIX is still strong. The last daily higher low was 24.90. Anything above that keeps the daily uptrend intact. Where are we looking from here? Only levels we've seen up here from 2008. So again, that's why we're shifting now from potentially like 2018 to now potentially like 2008. And today has a big part in that with the VIX as well. Hourly uptrend, higher low established at 50.30. We'll see how long the bulls can keep that hourly strength. And next time we top out, we'll just be looking for a daily higher low. Just like next time we bounce, we'll just be looking for most names to be giving us daily lower highs. So bears are really comfortable. It's going to take some kind of notable shift for any bulls to get comfortable holding overnight at this current point in time. Gold. So gold did break resistance, but not a ton of follow through. And if you've been watching these videos for months, there was a time where I was saying gold is positioned really well back here and then back here. Gold is positioned really well because the dollar is extremely strong and the market is at all time highs. All we need is a little dollar weakness and a little gold weakness and the gold bulls are ready to go. That was what got me into GLD months ago and that's why we've been bullish gold. Now I'm looking at the opposite scenario. I'm looking at the dollar with a daily RSI down in the teens or 20 and it has not broken the pattern of a lower high every single day for the last 12 days. So I know at some point in the near term future, we're gonna see even just a weak bounce, even if it's just a daily bear flag we're going to see a short-term dollar bounce. And same thing with the S&P 500. We're going to be looking for a short-term bounce at some point this week. And the gold bulls are not really positioned well to absorb that bounce. If we're not going up notably on an extremely weak dollar and gold day or dollar and market day, what's it going to take for the gold bulls to ignite to higher highs from here? Because any little bounce is going to be looking for consolidation and for a daily higher low to form compared to 1563. So recognizing this, I exited half of my GLD position today, changing my game plan a little bit because this stands out enough to me that I'm comfortable locking in that. I think it was a 14% gain at this point in my IRA and knowing what the market's doing and knowing I got a 14% gain sitting there for 2020, I'm going to start locking that in. So half of that is now locked in and the daily uptrend is my guide for the second half of that position. There's no real cracks in the armor for gold right now. It's just seeing the positioning of the dollar and the market and reminding myself, well, this is what got you into the trade. So maybe you should pay attention to the same thing happening in the other direction. Silver held support of 1639, has to see a break of 1761 to change the daily trend. Gold is still way stronger than silver. Bigger picture. Daily chart just keeps breaking out again. Multiple year highs with gold way stronger than silver, as far back as this chart will go, over 13 years. So I can say that in the last 13 years, there has been no point in time where gold has been stronger than silver by this much. So silver has to change the daily trend with a break of 1761, or has to, yeah, regain the daily uptrend. Bull miners are looking for a daily higher low to... Do we bounce that much? What's going on here? No. Not sure why that candle's doing that. We're missing the last five minute candle and it's throwing off these charts. My broker's closed right now. I'm assuming we closed at the high and the low here. So I'm looking at a broad equilibrium. Low, high, higher, low, and we're scouting a lower high compared to 762. The hourly uptrend is our guide. When we lose the hourly uptrend, our daily lower high is likely set. And for NUGT, it's the same thing. We are looking for a higher low. Again, we closed near the low of the day. But we have to change the hourly trend back to the bulls for the daily higher low to form. And we're going to likely have tightening daily ranges to be watching into the end of the week and potentially into first thing next week. 
Oil in free fall last night. Read up on what's going on between Saudi Arabia and Russia. Price war had a major factor to do with the huge gap down today in markets. And we are in an area with a lack of support. And we were highlighting how after 42, 39 and then nothing. And here we are, 2608 is in play. We bounced off 2740. Huge volatility. We bounced 20% from that low, but just to form a four hour lower high. I would be surprised if overnight we break 2731 support. I do anticipate the bulls will likely be able to hold that level. Then again, I've never really witnessed a price war, so I have no idea how much Saudi Arabia could really tank things. But I would just, looking at this chart, I would expect a four hour high or low. The bulls would have to then break 3481 for a four hour trend change to take place but huge amount of range for us to trade within between 27s and 34s. Even when we change the four hour trend, we just zoom out and look for a daily lower high to be set. Keep an eye on oil because if oil has not found a convincing bottom, it's hard to believe that the S&P 500 is going to be, if, be, able, be able to find a convincing bottom as well. Natural gas is a winner on the day after starting with weakness, big bull volume, big buying of the dip, but I have to see a four hour trend change because we've seen this before, not to this magnitude, but we've seen significant four hour bounces, unable to change the trend and they give the move all the way back. I would love to see a head and shoulders here. I don't think we're gonna pull back significantly enough for it to be a good looking head and shoulders, but if we reject from 185 and form a four hour higher low, maybe down to the mid 170s and then change the four hour trend, it's a falling wedge on the daily time frame. Keep an eye on natural gas. After being so bearish for so long, today's a day that gets my attention because of that volume. Falling wedge on the daily chart, right up at that resistance line. Big picture, we've been pulling back for so long. Let's see if we can get a bounce for a monthly lower high to be set. Four hour trend change on watch. So hope you had a good day out there today. And we will see what we get tomorrow. Spy after hours, hovering right around the low of the day, which was a double bottom. And it's certainly very interesting. Remember, there's bigger things in life than what's going on in the markets. And if you go around outside, I said today, someone posted on Twitter, everything's red, you know, caps lock and all that. And my response was, look out the window because there's no red out there. And life goes on. We'll end it here with some ping pong action. This is Chart Guys member Brady. Didn't have his best showing. Beat him pretty bad, but he has his moments.